Stampin' Friends, it's Kat. We are going to work today with an embossing folder, some watercolor pencils, a bunch of different inks. Got a bunch of different inks here to create this beautiful card. And there's a couple different, every time you do it, it's a little bit different from one another because you are, we're going to sponge and stamp directly on our embossing folder and make it look like this. It's so beautiful. Every time I still see how this blue is darker and this blue is lighter. And I did a wood scene here. You can do it with a bunch of other cards. I have done it here. Oops, upside down, sorry. I done it here with this embossing folder with just the greens and not doing anything else but just sponging and, and braying, using my sponge brayer on directly on here. And then I've also done it with just the watercolor pencils and coloring over this part. So it's like, those are both a couple variations, but this one, this is one of the first ones that I did and I just did the background and just did the white, I mean, sorry, the light blue and with um, soft sky. But I keep trying it more and more and more and I have found that I, this is probably one of my favorite cards I've ever made. I have watched quite a few people online doing it and I have come up with I've put a couple different people's variations together and added a few of my own things. So, first things first, in order to make this beautiful woodlands background, first thing that we're gonna need is our embossing folder. This is found in the annual catalog, 2017-2018 annual catalog. Also, we're gonna need some watercolor pencils. Here are the watercolor pencils found in the annual catalog as well. The only ones that I used, you can use whatever you want, but the ones that I used to make in this one was basic black, basic gray, and early espresso. Early espresso you use just a little bit in putting some really cool little curves in the tree to give it, so it's not just black and gray, you add a little bit of brown to it as well, because trees are not always the same color, just plain. And then also we, you'll need a watercolor, your aqua painter, and then for the blue background, the background to get the background on here, I use Soft Sky and Marina Mist, and I put that on this embossing folder with a sponge brayer. Sponge brayer, and these colors are both found in the annual catalog. And again, friends, um, this is all used in Stampin' Up! products, and if you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. You can look below this video and find a link to my website where you can buy all these awesome products. And let's keep going. Then for the trees that I did here, I used Garden Green, and always Artichoke. Those are the two colors I used for that. And the black, Archival Black, I only used for the saying here and the saying right here. And then I did the trees again on the inside and then I used the Marina Mist with my sponge. We're gonna mess with the sponge on the inside here. So it's gonna be a little bit of a longer one because this does take a little while, but I mean, I've made so many different cards with it. This is one of my first ones. I have gotten, I think I've gotten a little bit better at it, but it's totally up to you how you want to, how much and how little you wanna put on it. So let's start with how to get the blue background. To do the blue background, you need your sponge brayer. And I always stop with this lighter color, which is soft sky. And you're going to sponge directly on your embossing folder. So you have your embossing folder. There's two sides. There is your emboss side and your deboss side. Deboss is when you see the back, the back side of it, and embossed is when it has the raised sides. So we are going to sponge on the side that has the Sizzix and the Stampin' Up with the Stampin' Up side, the side that says Ellison and Sizzix on the side. This has, if you feel it. What's gonna be raised is gonna be your center pieces, not the trees. The trees are raised on this side, which then creates, if you do, if you sponged on this side, you would sponge on your deboss side. We're gonna sponge on the emboss side. And so where the center pieces are raised, because we're gonna sponge and brayer directly and stamp on that part. And that's what's gonna go into the, into the crevices. So stop with the soft sky, just push it and get lots of ink on it, that way you get, and I literally just start rolling all over it. Go multiple ways, because you don't want it, I like when it gets that kind of muted effect, you can do whatever you want, you want, but I like the muted effect. Get lots of ink. 
The light one you don't notice as much for me. It's more of a back, like just a subtle background on it. Sponge. So that way just the back isn't the, all the exact same color. And then next is going to be Marina Mist, which is to me is like a good daytime, sort of winter daytime. I like the mixture of these and it makes me feel like winter. I actually have a card that I put some embossing powder, sorry, embossing paste on as well. See, I don't know if you can, if you can see, see how it's starting to get just a little bit of blue. If you want to be more consistent and you can keep going. If you want to be more of a modeled effect, sort of like some skies, like the sun is coming through spots of the sky. You don't have to go all the way to the top because you're only going to be using this part of the folder anyways. Do it like that. So I like that. I think that'd be good. That way some parts will be darker, some parts will be lighter. Sort of like how it looks in winter time. We don't need the brayer. I'm going to put those blues and the brayer to the side. We don't need that anymore. So now I'm going to pull out my spun, my tree stamps. For this stamp, for the tree stamp, I used brand new catalog of the holiday 2017. It's season like Christmas. This tree I just think is so realistic looking. It's just so realistic and it looks, especially the two, two stamp, and I'm using two different colors to give it that modeled effect as well. Just like when things look more realistic in a card to me. That's just my preference. So this one I thought was awesome. I use, I'm using Always Artichoke as my base, which is my one that has more. That's going to be my base. And then I'm going to do Garden Green in this one that's right here. I find I like putting them on the same block. I don't have a lot of blocks, so that's why I do use the same block a lot. And plus, if you do it on a long block, you can flip-flop. Oops, yucky. It's got a little bit of yuckies. Let me take that off. Um, that way you can still see through when you're lining up. Because you want to be able to see through. That's part of the awesomeness that is two-step two stamping. And I'm sponging them towards the bottom. So you have the bottom edge here. I don't want them all to be exactly the same height because then that doesn't look very realistic. How many trees are exactly the same height? So I'm going to put, what I put in the middle, I put a little bit higher. Just how I've been doing it ones on the right side almost off the edge. Make sure to push nice and hard. And then the last one over here, like in the middle of the two. And maybe I could put a third one or fifth one there, but I think three. I'm a very big fan of things in threes and fives. I just think it looks better to me, so I'm just going to stay with three. And Plus, when you roll it, when you're um, put, rolling it through and cutting it, you can adjust where you want everything to be. Now I'm doing garden green on the smaller layer, and I'm lining it up. I'm sorry if my head's to make sure because there's kind of a hole. See how there's like a hole right there? I don't like that hole to be there, so I line up this base of the tree to make sure that there's not a hole anymore. The first couple I did, there was like lots of holes and. I just didn't like that. So, perfect. Because this bottom, I know it's a little bit yucky down there, but you know what? When we roll it through, you're not going to notice. That is not going to be seen. So, what we're going to do next is I'm going to have, I have a, just a standard quarter sheet of a card stock. Four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to put it on. I got a little piece of painter's tape, some painter's tape. I don't want it to move. But I don't want to put a, it on a, a big piece either because then that will mess up my card when it comes through. So I'm going to just softly put it down more towards the bottom. And I'm just going to barely put this on just a little bit. That way it keeps it in place. And then I'm going to hold it in place. I don't want to mess it up too much. But now I have my big shot. Still want to hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. So I've tried this a couple different ways. I find for me, because my my plastic platforms have seen a lot of action that tab one is tab one is the best because you can see curved lots of them i use this thing all the time i'm just gonna put it here put the bottom part on now the top one make sure it's lined up nice nice and tight and i want to make sure i roll it when i roll it through it's gonna be a little bit tight which is good i'm gonna roll it twice so all the way through one time Make sure I feel it, hear it click. Yep. Now I'll come back a second time. I just want to make sure the ink gets on there real nice and tight. So 
this over here out of the way and let's look in at what we have done. You open it, now flip that. Perfect. You can see it's modeled. There's some, you got some on the trees, you know what? That's okay. Because once you start coloring and painting over it, you're not gonna notice that. We can cut off the bottom, we can put some embossing paste on that to make it snow, however you wanna do it. I'm going to, you just have to take this off because see this little piece, kind of, you can see it through there, not a ton, but, and the best way, I want to clean, just so you guys know, for one, I use baby wipes when I clean my embossing folder. To make sure, and you're gonna wanna clean at least the tree part off between, if you're making a bunch of these, I did this for my swap with my, my, with my group this month, and you wanna make sure you just and clean that off really good. And I'll take a few seconds, it'll take a, little, a few minutes to dry, but that way you don't get lots of spots of trees or anything on the next ones that you do. Okay, so from here, we are gonna color. So when we color them, we're gonna use these three pencils. Again, basic black, basic gray, and early espresso. You can do it in whatever order you want. I like to do the early espresso first a lot of times, just because then it's light. I'm gonna put just a couple dashes in the tree. Now, when it's higher up, I put the dash curve down. That way it helps with the perception of your eyes to make it feel like when you look at a tree, it's higher up, and then same, the opposite with the bottom, curved up a little bit, and it really makes sure it gives your trees a three-dimensional effect. And the ones in the middle are gonna be a little more straight. Put as many or as little as you want. I don't put, necessarily put them in every single one of the trees. You can put a ton, just a little bit. I think that's good. Well, maybe one more right here. Perfect. Okay, put that to the side. And then I like to do next, I like to do the basic black. Now, I like this to have a really sharp point because I'm going to go along the very edges. So, use my, just my little guy. Nice sharp point on that. And then when I color, I'm gonna color, I'm gonna just outline the edge of every single tree. And then I'm gonna draw in, make these tree, extend them to give them those longer branches on there. Or even this one, see, and add some extra longer branches because birch tree doesn't stop with the short fat branch. It goes in tapers into little tiny skinny ones. Just make it as realistic. Now I'm not, I'm gonna do this kind of fast because it does take a little while to do this. Now I've gotten better at it because I've done it a lot now too, but I'm just literally just gonna color right along the edge. Right along the edge. You see how I'm just outlining the tree? Just along the edge. You cut a little bit over and you get onto the green, that's okay. We can use our aqua painter. The aqua painter is a very, will help us be more forgiving. Now, besides just the edge of the tree, the long trees, you also wanna do the branches. So here's my coloring quick along the edge there. And then you also wanna do the edge of the branch there. Again, just a little bit. It doesn't matter if you go up a little bit higher because you're gonna use aqua painter to paint it to make it look really cool. And these branches I like to color in a little bit more solid because you're making it look like it's an extension and there's not a separation. Same with this. This one, I'm gonna color it in and have it go up. I'm gonna have it a little bit fatter here towards the bottom and thin it out towards the top, just like a natural branch would be. And then I'm gonna have another one growing off the side over here. Maybe another one growing here and this going behind that tree that you don't see it. Another one going this way. You now you can do it however you want. So again, along the edge, along the edge, and you keep going. Now I'm not gonna do the whole entire card because I think that would be a little boring for you guys to watch, but it, I'm just gonna do that. All the ones that I have sticking out, I'm not gonna do that on this one or these ones there, but I am gonna do that here and here just because I like that look of the longer, Branch, like it's just filling up dead space, but not necessarily even just filling up dead space because I just think that looks so pretty. Okay, so I would do that along the edge for the rest of the trees. Now, also with the black, I won't stop there. I'm actually going to fill in all these little holes. Doesn't need to be filled in perfect. I'm literally just going to do dash, dash, and just put a dash in every single one of the holes. Now, if you don't want to do every single hole, you don't have to, but what it does, you got blue in all of these holes when you were rollering it through. So now you're gonna cover it up with the black. And 
and you're going to cut off a little bit of this because it is, I actually did a, like I said, five and a half by four and a quarter. Well, the front of the card really is only five by three and seven fifths on my card. I'm sorry, it's not seven fifths, 3.75 inches or three and three quarters inches. But I wanted to decide myself where I wanted to cut off extra. So I went ahead and just did a whole quarter of a sheet. Okay, I'm just going to stop here. I will have one already done to show you once it's complete. But now I'm going to do my gray. I'm going to take my gray. I'm just going to throw it in in a couple spots. Don't push real hard, real light, real easy. Throw it some in. Don't have to do everywhere because now we're going to use the aqua painter. We'll do one more little spot here. So you just color along the edge. Doesn't have to be hard. Doesn't you don't want to go out onto the blue really, but it's okay to go onto the white. Now your aqua painter. I'm going to paint this. I mean, this looks pretty enough like that, but I personally love the look of it looking painted like an actual painting. So, I just you just start on the edge. Just color softly on the edge. Now you can bring it in as much as you want and giving it that 3D effect. I go out in this, I color this a little bit so it kind of blends. Not too much. If you do too much, then they start to bleed. See, I did it right there. But if you do it just a little bit, because this is supposed to look like, to me, I'm almost making this look like it's a painting. You want to go over the brown a little bit too, and because they're watercolor pencils, they will bleed and they won't look so pencil you know you won't see your strokes that's why it doesn't matter quite as much what your strokes look like when you're doing it on see I went over there a little bit but I colored it in and look it just looks like it's part of the tree you can't even tell now that I had done a little goof because it's a homemade card and that's what I love about homemade cards again here all the way down the edge there I'm doing this again really fast. Normally I would take just a little bit more time and go a little bit slower. You can go as fast or as slow as you want doing yours. But I find doing the black on the edge really makes the, the tree stand out from the background just a little bit more. See, that one looks better. Not as It just gives them more of a definition and more, makes them pop. You can see the difference between the two trees. So, and just make sure you do the whole thing. But, so you guys... Take me, you know, obviously to finish the other side would take me a little while, but through the magic of TV, Shazam! I already have another one done. So, again, you can see how, I mean, every single one looks just a little bit different. You put as much or as little of it as you want on there. I am going to take this one now. Now, this is, like I said, this is five and a half by three and three quarters. I'm going to cut it down using my. Big Shot Guillotine. Now, I have, I really like this side. I think that side looks pretty. I'm not happy with the way that looks necessarily, so I'm going to go ahead and just sometimes do a little bit on each side. This one I like like that. I'm going to go to five inches. Now it's five inches. Now I'm going to go to three and three quarters. I don't know how you can see that. Three and three quarters. Now sometimes I just cut directly off top, sometimes off the bottom. I might cut a little bit off the bottom first because I don't necessarily like the way that looks right there yeah that looks much better and then just do a little smidge off the top you can take that use that for something else if you want actually I just think about you know what that would look pretty on the edge of a card on the inside of a card you can keep those layers since you spent so much time working on it anyways but and now it's done so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna attach it to a piece of garden green since we use garden green here in the tree I'm going to attach this to the garden green and it makes those trees pop out now this garden green piece this garden green piece is four by five and a quarter and I'm going to attach it using tom my Tombow liquid glue you can do it any way you want fast fuse snail I actually find this because when it's an embossed folder it attaches better because then you can get in the grooves if you use the the liquid. I don't like to go too far to the edges because then a lot of times it smushes out and you can see glue on the edge and then then you have to use your sponge and get rid of that. Your eraser, my adhesive eraser. So now I'm just going to go out, center it up real nice. Just a little bit more. Perfect. Then I like to go like this and smush it to get all, make sure the glue is smushed all around and the edges are all the way out to the edges as far as you can be. 
Perfect. So doesn't that look so pretty? It really brings out the greens. And see, as I have it, I have it on Marina Mist, which is the blue that we use there. I'm going to put the blue. I already have a piece cut here. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I am going to use my Stampin' Up. I should have had that a little closer. I had one of my friends, and she engraved that for me, but I'm gonna use this. My bone folder. I had a, my brain was totally blanking on me. I couldn't even remember what it was called. My bone folder, just cut it, fold it in half. And then here I am gonna use my snail. Fast fuse snail, if you wanna use the Tombow glue again, perfectly fine. But here I'm gonna do that and I'm going to put it just on the edge like that. I like to do the outside edges and then a little bit on the inside just so that way the outside edges stick really nice. Center that up on here. Center it up. I'm kind of OCD with my centering. Sorry. Okay, that looks nice. And you know what? You can do the card just like that and not even put a saying on the front. You can just send the card just like this if you want. Now I do have something on the inside, if you remember. I have this one. It says, I'm lucky I found you. I actually decided to make this card for my husband. It says, marriage is a journey. I'm lucky I found you. And first, I'm going to sponge the edges using my Marina Mist. Now my inside, as you see, it doesn't go all the way up to the outside edge, so this is four inches by five and a quarter. And just use, just sponge. Do as little or as much as you want. I like, when I'm doing cards like this, I like a little bit more. I am gonna sponge first before I put the trees on because that way, sometimes then when I'm going on the trees, I couldn't, you don't see them as good with like how much you sponged and everything. So I just like to do the sponging first. Personal preference. And you can just leave a sponge and not put any trees, but I like pulling the trees from the outside of the card to the inside. And I'm gonna do the exact same way that I did the outside trees. This time, I am gonna put my paper piercing mat underneath, so that way when I stamp, it gets, it's a nice even. It's always fine that if you put just a little bit behind your card, it makes a big difference for just that give. So again, always artichoke, always artichoke as my base. The one in the middle, I'm gonna do just a little bit higher. I'm gonna stamp off. Now the one on this side, I'm gonna do a little bit lower. The one on the other side, spot same, a little bit lower, maybe up a little bit higher. Now I don't like them being all exactly the same. They could have been a little bit lower, however you wanna do it. That's how, every time it's gonna be different. Now my garden green, and that was for the other piece. This two-step stamping, love two-step stamping. It just makes the so many of the things look so much more realistic. Let's see what I have. Make sure I fill it in, everything filled in just right. There we go, so that way you can see both colors. And you don't have too much of a green behind it. Each one is totally different from another. Awesome. And then the other piece is, sorry, sorry, my reach. I'm lucky I found you. That is from Lovely Friends. This is in the annual catalog, 2017, 2018. And I'm lucky I found you. You could put, I'm honestly feeling very blessed. I just love you so much. You make me ridiculously happy. I mean, there's so many different things. Or even, this is what phrase is what we use for marriage as a journey. You could also put, good thing you get to bring your best friend along. That would have been a nice one to put in the inside also. But I like this one personally. There's many other ones. But I am doing, this one is, I'm using basic black, the archival black. I really use archival black for everything because it's actually a true black. One's a little bit, I'm gonna make sure my head's not in the screen at all. And I like to put it just a little bit lower down. Perfect. 
Perfect. Okay. So that's my insert. Now I'm going to attach the insert to the card using, again, my snail. Love. I use the snail. That's probably my favorite adhesive is the snail. Do that right here on the inside. Right like that. A little bit picky the way I have mine centered. Then a lot of times I'll do that. Make sure it just gets in there nice and tight. But I'm going to put on the outside and the back my little... I keep this with all the time. I cut it out. It has been well loved. It says copyright Stampin' Up. Since everything I used was a Stampin' Up product. Do my little copyright Stampin' Up. And I just put that right there in the bottom. Copyright Stampin' Up. Perfect. I used Marina Mist, the same color that the cardstock is. That way it's you can see it but without being like too... Like, whoa, look at the back. So the only thing I have left now is to do the Marriage is a Journey with my basic black, with archival black. And Marriage is a Journey could be found in Flourishing Phrases. And again, on the inside, you could have used good thing. You can bring your best friend along. Word can express how deeply you're, I mean, there's so many different things. You can do something else even, but this part is Marriage is a Journey and I used the other one. So now I'm gonna go with Here's a journey. I'm going to do it towards the corner so that way I'm not using up a lot of my space. Just line it up. Ooh, that's a, yuck. See, I hate when that happens. That is so annoying. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip it over. So it's awesome about this. I don't put, so not, Katie, don't push too hard. Just hard enough. Much better that time. There we go. Oh, and by the way, flourishing phrases can be found in the annual catalog as well. And again, if you don't have a demonstrator, love to be your demonstrator, you can reach my website at papercraftingbycat.com and all of these items that you're seeing in the video today are available on my website for purchase. So now I'm going to cut that out. Now I was going to use a punch, oops, wrong machine. <laughs> I was going to use a punch to do this, but I really like that look. Oh my goodness, I am having technical difficulties today, aren't I? Let's just do a little, I'm just going to cut it. One cut there, one cut there. So really it ended up being about two inches by an inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter by two inches if you wanted to cut the piece out first. A little bit less than two inches. But sometimes I'll, a lot of times I will just pull out my stuff, stamp it, and then cut it. That way I can line it up. Now, this one, I did it a little different. I just rounded two corners instead of all four. And I did that using my corner rounder. This is the Project Life corner rounder. And again, just round two of the corners. Now I did, all of them I just did the bottom and the top one. That bottom corner doesn't look like, yeah, I need to clip a little bit more. Perfect. Now, I then just put this on here and just cut around it. Same thing I did last time. Sometimes I do a small amount on it to figure out how much I need to do. Sometimes I do more. Here, cut her again. Yeah, that's good. And, oh, now I remember why I didn't want to cut it all the way. Because now, oh, now, but now you can still corner around. Corner around this side, corner around that side. And, okay, so here's a scrap of blue. This is, again, the Marina Mess, same color as the back here. And oh, I didn't think I said this is garden green. Same as the color that I did here. And I'm just going to take this. Oh, look at that. I cut it exactly the right size already. So I'm just going to, again, use my snail, line it up. Sorry if I'm putting my head, hopefully my head didn't make it in the shot. Throw that on there like that. Snip off. Some people use paper snips. I like my lines to be very precise. So I'm going to use that one. Perfect. Good size. Corner round again. Corner around here. Corner around this side. And we're done. Now, that, well, every time I did it, it was a little bit different size. Oh, I did do sponge the edge that I didn't hear. That's okay. Everyone's different, like I love to say all the time. Every card you make is different. 
here, because it's a bigger card, I, a bigger piece, I'm going to put four corners. Sometimes I only put two, one on each side. This one's a little bit bigger, so I'll probably use half a dimensional on either, either corner. And there you go, voila, done. I did say someone had a trick this, that you, you put your fingernail and then you push down and it makes those easier to get up, which it did. It did. Now I could put this anywhere. I could put it up here, I could put it in the middle, I could put it down the corner, put up that corner. I mean, you can put it wherever you want. Sometimes I'm covering up a mistake and that's why I put it in a certain spot. This one, there's a lot of blue there. I don't like that. So I'm going to cover it up, that up. That is what's awesome about putting stuff on the front. Cover up wherever you want. And there we go. Here's the first two we started with. See how they're a little different? And here's the one that we just finished. Voila. Marriage is a journey. I'm lucky I found you. Now we did cover up the top of the trees, which is the other ones. The trees aren't covered up on the top. I do like that those trees aren't covered up, but it's okay. It is what it is. And that's where you go. Marriage is a journey. Lucky I found you. So I really enjoy sponging and doing the brayer, really brayer and stamping on embossing folders, which is this, the one that we use today. Stamping on the embossing folders. I'm probably going to have another soon to show you how to stamp on other embossing folders. Thank you so much for joining me. If again, if there's any of the products you've seen and you don't have a demonstrator, would love to be your demonstrator. You can visit me at papercraftingbycat.com. It is right there at the top of your screen. And if you like what you've seen, you want to see get be subscribed to my channel and see more of my videos. You can do so right there on the button on the side. Thank you, paper crafting friends, and I will see you again soon. Bye.